PhD students, or good morning, depending on when you have a chance to, to view this video. Um, but I, I want to take just a couple of minutes and, and tune your attention to something that we see in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, that uh, is really encouraging to my soul, and, um, and hopefully will be to yours as well. You know, what's interesting is that over the past handful of weeks, uh, you know, while we've been in quarantine, I've had a chance to do something that I don't typically typically get the chance to do. Um, I've been able to, like, build a couple of things for our house, right? It seems weird for me to even say those words, but, like, I've had the chance to build, like, these cool uh, flower planters, uh, like, boxes that my wife really liked and really wanted. Um, so I, I built those things and was able to stain those things and make them look really nice for our house. And then this past weekend, like I had the chance to uh, to build some shelves that my wife really wanted. And so I built these shelves, stained them, put them in the house, and they look great. And something that I was reminded of as I was sort of doing this together, um, I was reminded of the importance of patience uh, when it comes to doing things like this. Now, typically, I'm not the best at things like that because I'm typically an impatient person. Um, but in this season where life is a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, intentionally paused for us, you know, more of a slower pace, uh, I was able to take my time a little bit more, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I was, I was reminded of the importance of patience when it comes to being successful uh, at things like that. And, and I think about what we see in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. And, and for me, as I look at this passage, um, I, I'm encouraged. I'm challenged, but, I, but I'm also encouraged. And, and I, I want to read this to you, and then I want to just give you maybe just one or two things that you can grab a hold of today and, and maybe think on um, that hopefully will provide some challenge but also encouragement for you. So let's read Philippians 2, uh, 12 and 13. Um, Paul says this, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? For it's God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Guys, as you, as you look at these two verses, like there, there's a lot that happens here. There's a lot that you could even dig down deep into. Um, but what Paul is getting at is this idea of progressive sanctification. Uh, sanctification meaning that this is the process in our lives where we are gradually made more and more like Jesus. Progressive in the sense that it happens all throughout your lifetime. So when you first become a believer, um, on day one, as you are becoming a believer, or you are a believer, um, you will continually become more like Christ until the day that you see Jesus. Um, so it's not something that happens overnight. It's a, it's a long game marathon process where you are becoming like Christ. But what's really interesting is that you know, when it comes down to you becoming like Jesus is that it's not just you that's in the process of making this happen, um, but it's God at work in you. The passage says, uh, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Now, now we could, we could take a long time to be able to, to dissect this, but the idea is that uh, as you are progressing forward in your relationship with Jesus, as you are saying no to sin and saying yes to obedience, as you are saying no to distractions and saying yes to time in the Word, uh, as you're laying down other idols and worshiping Christ and Christ alone, uh, that it's not just you that's making those choices, but it's God working in you, and He's working in you uh, for His good pleasure. Now, that's awesome to see that your sanctification is not a process that you are solely responsible for, but you've got the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. But at the same time, there is responsibility that's placed on your shoulder to say no to sin, to say yes to obedience. There, there's a dual working that happens here where God is working in you to accomplish those things. Um, but I'm encouraged as I think about this because this is not something that happens uh, overnight, guys. Um, this is a process that takes a lifetime to, uh, to finish. You can't get impatient in this process. So there may be days where it seems as if you make such leaps and bounds uh, in victory, where, man, you are saying no to sin in ways like you've never said no before, 
and you are becoming like Jesus just visibly. You, you, you're loving the Bible more. You're spending more time in the Word. Uh, you're spending more time in prayer. Seems like for a week that things are going great. Um, but then something happens and you have some sort of setback. And it seems like everything that you have progressed forward to uh, has been sort of lost. And that can be discouraging. And you begin, you can begin uh, to doubt and to get frustrated and irritated and even be begin to question, like, am I truly a believer, right? Uh, but in those moments, remember. Remember that your uh, process of becoming like Jesus is not something that will happen in a day. But it, it happens over the course of a lifetime. So guys, don't be discouraged if you look back at your yesterday and yesterday was a failure for you. Find hope in the gospel that the Lord has not done working in you to accomplish his purposes and plans. And so press into today and press forward, trusting and resting in the gospel of Jesus. Don't get discouraged because of what maybe happened yesterday, but, but look with hope and strength to what lies ahead, knowing that he is not done with you. Guys, be patient in this process. Don't get discouraged. Uh, don't get frustrated, but trust the Lord and keep pressing in um, because in the course of this lifetime, you'll see as you progress in age and even as you stand before Christ face to face, you'll be able to say that it's been worth the struggle and it's been worth the journey. Uh, and your life is full of joy because of the victories gained and lost along the way. So guys, uh, be encouraged by Philippians chapter 2. Spend some time studying it, even yourself, uh, over the next couple of days or so. But um, again, it's good to see you, and we can't wait. Man, we can't wait to see you guys sometime soon. Uh, but we hope you have an awesome day. We love you guys. See you soon.